the Bible is a smart book. I don't understand what they say. These laws are outdated. That doesn't make sense. Right. This is nation building right here. Right. If we stop one person from killing every killing everybody, that changes everything. It's a domino effect. All right. Let's go back to nation building. Let's get there. Let's go nation building. Deuteronomy 22. More nation building. This is how we clean up our communities by keeping the laws of God. Everything I say will come out the Bible, and it's going to make sense. I dare anybody to come up and debate with us. If you don't feel that the Bible is a solution to our to our communities, please bring your cause. That's why we're here. We're here to reason in the scriptures with our brethren. All right? You got it? First one. Let's go. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 22 and verse 1. Now remember, the whole point is nation building, not nation destroying, not killing your brother, all right? right. Go ahead. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray go and hide thyself from them. What that means is if you see your brother's ox or his ass or you see some of his property missing, right? You see it and he doesn't know where it is. Read that part again. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his ass go astray go and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case, it says thou in any case, meaning in any wise, meaning even if you're mad at him or if you don't know him, you can't stand him or he did something you did something to you back in the past. Go ahead. Bring them again unto thy brother. You bring that property back to your brother. It doesn't matter what goes on. You bring his property back to his brother. Now let's think about this. Let's say for example, if my brother if, if my brother may be upset, right, and his ox or ass goes astray, you know a good way to get back in good grace with your brother? You bring that ox or ass back because he think, well, you know what? I did that man wrong, but I, but he still brought my property back. He didn't have to do it, but he did. That changes his mindset. You know what? That brother's a good brother right there. I did that brother wrong. I might even apologize for what he did to me, for what I did to him earlier, all right? right. That's how you build a community. Bring, like, mend fences. Mend these things back together. Keep going. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, even if you don't know this brother, let's say we don't, we, I'm not from around here, all right? I don't know any of y'all, but I'm commanded to do what? Read it again. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, Go ahead. then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house. So I would take your property and bring it to my house, but it's not what you think. We're not stealing. Because that goes against the law. Keep going. And it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it. Until I find out that you're looking for it, because I don't know whose it is. If I find someone's property, and then I see on the news, on a, a, a flyer or something, oh, I lost my cat. Look at the picture. Hey, that cat like the one that's the guy looking for, right? I wait for you to come get it, or I contact you. That's what the Bible is saying. Keep going. And thou shalt restore it again to him. Then I give you that cat, man, because you was looking for it. I don't have to know you to apply a law. This is brotherhood. Keep going. In like manner shall thou do with his ass. Like manner the same thing with any other of his property. Go ahead. And so, so shall thou do with his raiment. Go ahead. And with all lost things. It doesn't matter what it is. Ox, ass, clothes, uh, car, whatever. You are to restore that to your brother because it is not yours. Go ahead. Of thy brothers which he hath lost and thou hast found. Shall thou do likewise. All right, we're going to come back to that. All right, my brothers. Hope everybody understands nation building. That's what we're going to keep going over. And my brother, let me, what's your question? Um, I never knew um, Jesus God was black. All right, so listen. This is what you were taught, right? You were taught that Jesus Christ looks like a white man, correct? What about you? That's what we were taught? Now, what if I told you in the Bible you would never find a description of a white Jesus Christ? Would right. you believe me? You wouldn't believe me? Now I got to prove it to you, right? The scriptures the script say prove all things. Bring right? it out. So we're going to prove to you that Jesus Christ is not a Caucasian man. Right. He doesn't look like a white man at all. Go to Revelation 1, all right? Revelation chapter 1, start at verse 1. Bring it out. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation means to reveal. So we're going to reveal to you what Jesus Christ looks like. Now pay attention. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. It said... The hair on his head and his beard are white like wool. So the color of his hair was white, the color, and the texture of his hair was woolly. Do you know what woolly hair looks like or feels like? Put your hand on top of your head. Top of your head. That's wool. Right. That's wool. We have woolly hair. Now, does a white man have woolly hair? You ever seen a sheep? Yes. Has a texture of it? That's what you have. You have the hair of a sheep. Right. 
That's what the same, the same hair that Christ has had. It described him as having woolly hair, right? Now we look at a, a, a so-called white person, how does their hair look? Stringy, right? right? Long and stringy. It's not like it's not it's no wool in there. It's not like yours. Your texture is strong. The reason why you have that texture because you have the best hair in the world. Right. They'll tell you that the best hair is the is long and stringy, but that's weak hair. Your, your hair is your hair can out, outlast any weather. It's good in any weather. Trust me, I know this. All right. When it gets hot, it's good. When it's cold, it's good. Either either way. All right. But keep going. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. And his feet. I can see your toe right here, right? What color is your toe? What? Is it the same color as your legs? No. Yes. You sure? Yes. All right, cool. Is it the same color as your arm? Yes. Same color as your face? Yes. All right, so it said Christ's feet. Go ahead. Like unto fine brass. He said Christ's feet were like to fine brass. The color of his feet was brass. Do you know what color brass is? What about you? Almost, very close, but it's a bronze. It's like a brown color, brownish color, okay? You take that brown and do what? As if they burn and they burn. And you burn that brown. Now we're getting to it. Now what happens when you burn anything? What color does it, does it, does it become? Black. There you go. So Christ's feet were compared to as burnt brass, meaning very dark, right? That's Christ in the Bible. He looks just like you, just, look, just like me and everybody in this, in this community right here. But you was taught white Jesus, right? But now you know that's a lie, right? So when anybody shows you a picture of white Jesus and say, oh, Jesus is white, you don't know what you're talking about, you got the proof right here. Right. All right? Don't let nobody tell you different because the most important thing is knowing who you are. Right. You are from the greatest people on this earth. Right. You are from the tribe, I'm sorry, you are from the nation of Israel. That's right. God's chosen people. I'm going to show you how special it is. Go to uh, Exodus 501, all right? Y'all remember Moses? About Moses, how he led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. Y'all heard, heard that story before? And destroy Pharaoh. All right, watch this. 501. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 1. You know? And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh. This is what Moses told Pharaoh, because Pharaoh was our he was our slave master. He had us in slavery. He did very bad things to us. All right? Keep going. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The Lord God of who? Of Israel. So God is only for the Israelites. Keep going. Let my people go. He said, let my people go. God said, let my people go. His people are the Israelites. Right. Everybody else is not God's people, okay? Now give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6, all right? So let me ask you this. What's your, what would your father be? Would he be a so-called African-American or a Jamaican or a Haitian? What would your father be? African-American, what about you? Same. Same thing? Okay, good. So that means you would come from the tribe of Judah. That's right. All right? Same. You know who else came from the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. Right. The one that you just described as a black man. Right. He came from the same tribe you're from. So that means the savior of the Bible, our Messiah, his blood is running through your veins right now because you're you're his brother. You're his little his little brother. That's what it is. Y'all are y'all are cousins. Bring it up. Related. All right, keep going. Deuteronomy 76, 76. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. He says, the Israelites are a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So he said, we're special. Go ahead. Above. Hold on. Y'all listen, listen to this real quick. Listen, my brother. Listen. Y'all are Israelites, right? Y'all are Israelites. He said that y'all are what? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God said that y'all are above every other nation on the, top, on the face of this earth. All right? That means... There's no such thing as a Chinese man being equal with you, or a white man, or an Arab man. God says that you're better than them. Right. All right? But you know you have to keep the laws of God. All right? What you, what you want to be when you grow up? That's what I want to know. What do you want to be when you grow up? You don't know yet? What about you? Football player. Now, let me ask you this. And being a football player, you know you have to work very hard, right? Very, very hard. And even if you work as hard as you can, you might not make the team. Correct? Or if you make a team, you might get injured. Your career is over with. Right. All right? I'm not trying to ruin your dreams, but I'm trying to get you to think about something. What's your backup plan? What's going to sustain you to take care of yourself and then later on to be able to take care of your wife and then take care of your children? What are you going to do that can sustain you to take care of your family? What do you want to do after that? And that's the, and that's the, ugh, and that's the problem because our people are only taught that we could be music entertainers, right. uh, uh, rappers, See? athletes, and that's it. How can we? What about being an electrician or or a lawyer? What about that? 
What about being a, a, a doctor? What about that? Think about this. The season, the NFL season stops at a time. Even college, they gotta stop for a time. But if you're a doctor, people get sick every day. Right. People get, get hurt every day. That means you get to work as much as you can to get your to get your money. Right. Think about that. What about what about being a construction worker, building a house? Houses go up all the time, all the time. What about that? Y'all gotta y'all gotta train your minds to be better. Give me um, what you got? Yeah, get that, get that. Get a root. I'm gonna get something else after that. I'm trying to think more what it is. But, uh, go ahead. Yeah, four and one. This is the book of Baruch, chapter four, verse one. This is the book of the commandment of God and the law that endure forever. All that keep it shall come to life. Now give me what the uh, first Kings 10 and 12. Let's get that. All right, so listen. Being a football player, it sounds good, but you have to train your mind to do something better. Because you're not just an athlete. God doesn't put you on this earth just to run around for the white man and, and do what he wants you to do. All right? Do something for your people. Right. Think about this. The same man that you're going to be working for has this in a pressure right now. If these white people cared about you so much, why do you live like this? Right. Why don't you live the same way they do? Why is that? They hate you. I know, I know it might sound crazy, but there ain't a white man on this, on, on this earth that loves you. And I'm going to prove it. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 10 and verse 12. You know. And the king made of the Alma tree. That's not what I wanted. Um, what do you think? What David taught is, um, what David taught Solomon. Two. 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 That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Had to reform my minds, young men. All right. You're, be you're better than an athlete. You don't have to be an athlete. Go to school and learn something. Be something for your community. All right. Be an example. Everybody wants to be an athlete, and a lot of people in the hood, most people in this in this hood are not going to be athletes at all. You probably get one person that makes it out of there, and that's even slim. Read that. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 2, verse 1. Now the days of David drew not. Is that it? Yes, sir. Wait, wait. That he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying. So this is a father talking to his son, all right? We're out here like, um, is your father in your life? Where's your father at? You in the house? What about yours? Texas. In Texas? All right, so this is what your father should be teaching you. Go ahead. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. So uh, this is a father telling his son to be strong and show himself as a man. So he's going to teach him how to be a man. All right, go ahead. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. It says keep the charge. Go ahead. To walk in his ways. To keep his statutes. So it says keep his statutes. Let me ask you this. Um, what do you think about the crime that goes on in this community? Do you feel yeah, safe yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Huh? You do? Now what about if somebody has a problem with you? What do you think about that? What's going to happen? Do you want that? So what should you do? We should fight against that, right? It's not good. It doesn't matter who it is. If, if one of my brothers was ca causing harm to this community, I'm going to turn them in. All right? I know y'all heard about no snitching and everything, but if you don't tell, if you don't do something, if you don't stand up against that, it's going to keep on happening. All right? Do you think any of these other nations, like the white man, do they live in the hoods like this? My question is, why not? If we're all equal, why do we not suffer the same things? Think about that, young man. And my brother. And bring my brother over here. I'm going to show you something real quick. Yeah, yeah, real quick. Five minutes I got you on your time. Five minutes. Five minutes. But y'all keep it in your minds, man. Y'all are the greatest thing ever walked this earth. Right. There's no such thing as equality in the Bible. Jesus Christ is not white. Right. Christ, the black Messiah, is not coming back to save everybody. He's coming back to save his people, all right? Nation 